Journey with David Howard. I'm David Howard and welcome to The Journey. I've been all over the world collecting artifacts and documenting many societies, but after hearing of Palawan Island in the Philippines, I decided a trip to the tribes and a study of the mainstream Christian culture on the island warranted the journey. What drives me on to travel such great distances to come to terms with the people and their way of life, so remote and so far from my home, is a primordial instinct for the integration of life, death, and love into the art of living. I had come all the way from Manila on a rough 24-hour sea voyage hoping to understand the modern Filipino culture as well as the very old native tribes. Here on Palawan Island, the final Filipino frontier after docking at Puerto Princesa, the capital city of Palawan, I wrapped my cameras in rice sacks to confound potential thieves. Hey! And with the help of two porters, I continued my trek by tricycle to a local guest house. Palawan is located in the southwestern part of the Philippine island chain. Made up of mostly mountains and jungle, Palawan's coastal region is the only land which can possibly be used for agriculture. The island's ecology is so unique, it spawns plants and animals which can only be found on Palawan. There are very few inhabitants, but the Bartok and Palawan tribes can still be found. And now, together, this becomes our unique journey of coming to terms with the inner self through the understanding of these people of Palawan. Filipino culture can be roughly divided into two main categories, the mainstream Catholics and the native cultural minorities. The mainstream Christian families exhibit great solidarity, emphasizing loyalty and support. It is not unusual for a Filipino family to have many children. The majority are Catholics, but native tribes still practice their own form of religion. The mainstream Catholics require commerce for survival, but the Filipino tribes do not, because they can be self-sufficient. After leaving the guest house, David continued his travels to meet the Batak tribe, in the Filipino mountains, far from all urban activity. Only the jeepney surpasses the tricycle in being the most popular means of transportation within the Philippines. When World War II ended, the United States Army left their infantry jeeps behind all throughout the island. The jeepney originally was fabricated from these abandoned military vehicles. Owned and operated usually by its driver, the jeepney creates an alter ego and a persona for all the vehicle's occupants, as well as remaining a distinctly Filipino cultural characteristic. <laughs> With laughing horns and disco lights, traveling by jeepney is an unforgettable experience. The following morning, my journey resumed, once again with the plan to visit the Palawan tribes in the mountainous highlands. I was hoping to get a boat heading north. Oh! There was nothing available going my way. After leaving the peaceful shoreline, I headed off into the rugged interior of the island with a desire to glimpse the few surviving primitive tribes people. I should have said a prayer before leaving the city of Porto Princesa because this four-hour trek on top of a jeepney 
covering only 60 miles on a dirt road unexpectedly turned out to be a rough ride in the rain. I was hoping to find the mountainous jungle habitat of the native Batok tribe. I set out with three porters and a guide, hoping to locate these elusive, exotic, shy natives. The Bartok are nomadic and virtually extinct. The tribe had numbered over 4,000 at the end of World War II, but now have fewer than 500 surviving members. The Bartok believe in a variety of nature spirits and supernatural beings. They rely on shamans to mediate their relationships with these spirits. The Batak gods inhabit specific rocks, caves, streams, and other places within the natural environment. The story of the Batak is one that has been repeated throughout history. A society that has survived for centuries suddenly falters and passes out of the human record. Living primarily from hunting and gathering, the Batak forages in the jungle for their sustenance. Working together, the Batak tribe hacks and digs in their native Palawan jungle to find their daily diet. Batak females wear bundles dangling on their backs of flying squirrel tail status symbols that prove the hunting proficiency of their male partners. Banana leaves are used as serving plates. After David took a tricycle and a jeepney in the rain, he finally arrived at his guest house in the jungle near the Batak tribe. David met and hired a 30-year veteran guide to take him to meet the Batak tribe. Would you like to do some shots at night, maybe with candles or a group all together, dancing, singing, oh, maybe also they know old stories burial practices, maybe they can show us the graves, yeah. what rituals they have, marriage ceremony, special events in the life of the Batak I'm looking for. What makes you sad? Have you ever killed a person? And if you have, why? What drugs do you take? Okay, so I'd pay you a thousand pesos and 500, 500 for the two days. So you guide up and down and then you also then translate tomorrow but maybe you come at seven. Yes. Okay. And but if you are late, yeah. then we you make up the time on Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At the end. Okay. It's not a problem. So we'll stay two nights there. And then anyone too tired, sick, or drunk will not be paid. Okay. Okay. So we leave tomorrow at dawn. David's group of five had three porters and a guide. It took nearly six hours up a mountainous jungle trekking path to reach the Batak village. With the video camera equipment wrapped in waterproof rice sacks, David's party struggled through the dense, moist, humid jungle to reach the Batak village. The Batak tribe live in raised, thatched platform, lean to huts with three walls and a roof. The Batak huts do not have electricity or running water. <laughs> Like the African lion, Botak hunting tribesmen only catch prey one out of 20 times hunting.
concept of attack. One-eyed male dancer does ritual trance dancing, while females play percussion instruments made of bamboo. The Batak cook all their food on open fires in hanging metal-covered steel pots on a raised wooden platform that has a sheet metal base. Every member of the Batak tribe eats with their hands while sitting on their hunches in a squatting position. Rattan weaving is a specialized art form that the Batak are proficient at that they use nearly exclusively for every conceivable possible purpose. Foraging for edible wild plants is an essential Batak survival technique that has been passed down for thousands of years from generation to generation. While sitting on their haunches in a squatting position, Batak females use knives or carved pointed sticks to dig for edible wild roots. Using machetes, male and female Batak pairs cut and pick edible yellow blossoms from indigenous wild bushes. Using a split stone, a batak machete is sharpened to more than an extremely sharp edge. While using their lips to point in a particular direction, the batak use language, as well as facial expressions to communicate. An English translation follows. The batak believe that there is a spirit in everything that exists, in the jungle, everything is alive, with a life of its own. What makes me happy is when all Batak people have everything that they want, so no one goes hungry or has any other need, and that all my family and friends have everything that they hope for. When I dance, I dance in a trance, so I can meet the jungle spirits. Dancing takes me. Out of my body, I go to another place where I can talk to the jungle spirits. The spirits guide me. They tell me what I should do when I have a difficult decision to make. After I visit the spirits, I always know what direction I should take. When I was a young girl, life here, for the Batak, in my village, was harder than it is now because we had to get everything out of the jungle. Now, traders in a nearby town trade with us what we need in exchange for what we find in the jungle. What makes me happy is when my children help me do my hard work. That way, I do not feel so tired and I can enjoy life. 
more that way. What makes me sad is when I'm left alone. I need to be with people, even when I'm sleeping. If I'm with people, I always feel happy, but when I'm alone, I'm always sad. I'm also sad when I have no work to do, but when I'm working, I'm always happy. After I finish my work, I always go looking for other people in my village. If I stop working and I cannot find someone to be with, I feel lost and lonely. What is most important to me is that I never killed a person, someone from another village that I met when I was working alone in the jungle, tried to kill me, but I screamed and ran out of the jungle, back to my own village. Rich fishing waters that had once supplied the bulk of the Batak diet are now lost to them forever. The surviving members of the tribe have since retreated back into the mountains and acquire sustenance only from within the jungle. One of the most pressing global issues of the late 20th century is the rapid disappearance of many of the world's remaining tribal populations. Here, survival of the fittest is a reality rather than a theory. I was exhausted from the jungle trek, and it began to rain again. So I hopped in another jeepney back to the city of Porta Princesa. Journey with David Howard.